This week, the Just Japan podcast talks to a Texan in Tokyo. You're listening to the Just Japan podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. Hey there, folks, and welcome to episode number 72 of the Just Japan podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. My name is Kevin O'Shea, and I'm a Canadian who lives and works right here in Japan. And I am the host of the Just Japan podcast, a weekly podcast that brings to you all things Japan. That's right. We try to cover as many bases as we can. It's episode number 72, so that means 72 bases have been covered. That's right, a lot of different topics, a lot of different guests, a lot of different wonderful things we've talked about right here. And if you are a fan of Japan, if you're someone who is interested in Japanese culture, in Japanese language, in Japanese life in general, you're thinking of traveling to Japan, you're thinking of living in Japan, working in Japan, whatever it may be, you're going to like the Just Japan podcast. Because, again, there's something for everyone who has an interest in Japan. And you know what? Even if you're not so much of a a Japan fan, I use air quotes while I say that, I think you'd just be interested in this podcast because I interview so many amazing people who have so many amazing stories. And this show is really about stories. It's really about the experiences that really interesting people have in a really interesting place that they share with you. And... Guys out there listening, guys and gals, thank you so much, Just Japan Podcast listeners, for listening. You're going to enjoy this week's episode. I'm going to be talking to Jay Vlogger, Japan video blogger, uh, Grace, known as a Texan in Tokyo. And uh, Grace is um, much more than just a Jay Vlogger, a video blogger. She uh, she is also she's an artist and, and and foremost and forefront she is a cartoonist she is an artist with several uh, books published of her work she's a writer she's a blogger she is a a person who does a lot of really crazy amazing things and uh, she lives here in Japan uh, with her husband and we're gonna find out a lot more about a Texan in Tokyo Grace later on in the episode so stay tuned for a really awesome guest a really awesome episode. Wow, really cool. A Texan in Tokyo talking about being a cartoonist in, in Japan and, you know, being a writer in Japan and doing a lot of really cool things in Japan. I really need to thank you guys for taking the time to download this episode of the Just Japan Podcast. I need to take the time to thank you for downloading every single episode of the Just Japan Podcast that you have downloaded. Uh, this is episode number 72, and I'm so happy that the podcast has has reached this point um, to be honest, you know what, this is my second kick at the can for podcasting. Back in 2008, I had a podcast about um, Canadian history, something I am passionate about, but that only lasted for eight episodes before I threw in the towel. And I think a lot of the reason was that was something I was doing completely 100% by myself. I didn't have guests on. I wasn't interacting with other people. So I think I quickly lost interest. But because I am each and every week interviewing a different person, talking to different people on the Just Japan podcast. It keeps me going. It keeps me interested and eager to do the show. So, of course, you can download the Just Japan podcast. You can subscribe to us on iTunes. Just do a search on iTunes, Just Japan podcast, or check out the show notes at boostonkevin.com. You can find us on Stitcher Internet Radio, on SoundCloud, and on the Libsyn Online Player. We're all over the place, folks. And all those show notes, all the, I mean, all those links are in the show notes at BusanKevin.com. That is my YouTube nom de guerre, Busan Kevin, YouTube.com slash Busan Kevin. Uh, I've been a YouTuber for many years. And, uh, you know, I was a YouTuber in Canada. No, actually, Korea, hence the term Busan, Canada, and now here in Japan. So uh, check those links all out there in the show notes at BusanKevin.com. All right, folks, the oppressive summer heat is here. It is officially summer. And sadly, 
not more than a week ago, I was saying to my wife, wow, summer's pretty good this year. It's pretty cool. It's not so hot and humid. Well, this week has proved me wrong. Well, last week proved me wrong as well. It's bloody hot. It's bloody humid. And the typhoons be a coming. And the cicadas be a coming. So um, cicada season has begun a little bit later than normal. So I guess it was a bit of a cooler spring. Normally the, the cicadas, uh, semi, as they're known in Japan, would be out chirping away uh, a few weeks earlier than this year, I think. Um, but, you know, uh, they're, they're out in full force. And so are the typhoons. And I'm actually supposed to be going to summer camp with my school at the end of this week. And it looks like some typhoons, or well, at least one typhoon is approaching. So we're hoping it's going to veer off before it gets here. Uh, even if it's raining a bit, we can go go ahead with summer camp. And hopefully, we're, best case scenario, worst case scenario, it just rains a little bit. And then we have to do some indoor activities. Best case scenario, that typhoon does some kind of weird corkscrew action and just flies back down to the South Pacific. Um Cicadas are a big thing here. This is a very warm, humid climate, which uh, cicadas love. They're very loud critters. They're the loudest insects in the world. And here's something that you may not know. Cicadas will pee on you. That's right, they pee on you. They pee. I mean, I guess everyone's got to kind of eliminate fluids from their bodies from time to time. But, uh, you know, if, if, you're in, if you're here in Japan, in the Kansai region, or in a very warm region, and it's a beautiful summer day and the skies are blue and there's no breeze and you walk under a tree and all of a sudden you get showered with some kind of wetness. You look up and you don't see anything. Probably a good chance it's a cicada. So I got peed on by my first cicada on Sunday morning uh, walking to the train station with my family. That's right, walking along, beautiful day blue sky no clouds in the sky all of a sudden i feel a bunch of wet stuff hitting my head i'm kind of follically challenged so uh you know i'm pretty quick to pick up on that and i kind of i noticed on my arm there were some kind of quote unquote water droplets and i had my camera um kind of slung over my shoulder and i, I saw some on my camera as well and i looked up into a tree and deduced hey cicada just cicada just peed on me that's uh, another wonderful aspect of, of summer here in Japan. All right, folks. So in episode number 67 of the Just Japan podcast, I interviewed my friend, friend of the show, friend of the Just Japan podcast, Kevin Tarpey. Uh, he was a friend of mine back in Korea uh, about his amazing hike, his walk in the woods about to begin. Um, Kevin um, was uh, in episode number 67, talked about his upcoming hike. He was going to be doing a through hike and uh, of the entire distance of the Appalachian Trail starting in, uh, let's see if I can remember this, uh, Mount Katadin? Katadin? Oh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. In northern Maine, all the way down to Springer Mountain in Georgia. And uh, that's more than 2,000 miles, more than like something like 3,400 kilometers. He's going to be hiking all in one shot, in order to raise funds for the Cam Neely Cancer Foundation in Boston. Um, Kevin is an awesome dude who's doing an awesome thing. Kevin lost both of his parents to lung cancer, sadly, and both at a young age. Um, and he is going to be doing this amazing hike in their memory. So, of course, you can check out his website. Go to his website, thegreenhoof.com, thegreenhoof.com. I'm going to put links in the show notes to his website and his Twitter. Um, so go check that out. He will be documenting his amazing journey. And I'm going to be posting a lot about this because it means a lot to me because he's a friend of mine who's doing something very personal, very amazing. <laughs> and I respect him a lot. So this week, folks, I want to thank our guest Grace from the Tokyo, or sorry, the Texan in Tokyo uh, YouTube channel. For taking the time to stop by the Just Japan podcast, um, it, it great great story, great um, uh, inspirational thing to listen to. Uh, Grace is here from the states. Her husband is Japanese. They met in university in the United States, and now they live together in in Japan. And she works as a freelancer. She is a writer. She is a cartoonist. Uh, she does a lot of cool things. And you're really going to enjoy this interview. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so folks out there listening to episode number 72 of the Just Japan podcast, we've got an awesome guest tonight. We've got the Texan in Tokyo, Grace. Hi, everyone. Great. Awesome. Uh, having me on. Yeah, well, thank you so much for taking the time to stop by the Just Japan podcast and chat chat with me and uh, and, and the listeners. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so, so yeah, so, so Grace, uh, first of all, uh, you know, one of the first things I always ask, uh, someone who comes on the podcast, can you, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from and what you do in Japan? Okay. Well, um, as the channel name Texan in Tokyo kind of implies, I am, I am Texan. I was born and raised, uh, mostly in Texas, um, what else? What do I do in Japan? Well, I'm an author and I'm a blogger and a YouTuber and I, I do that whole full time working for yourself, working from home thing. Um, so that's, of course, very interesting. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, you, 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 you do you do a lot of things. I've been watching I've been watching your, uh, you know, your kind of everyday life videos um, yes. where you where you show what you do in a day. And you you definitely are busy, a busy person, a self-employed, very busy person. Yes, it's it's absolutely fantastic working for myself. I only started last year, and I think I work a lot more than when I worked for a company. But I enjoy the work tremendously, and so you know, I, I have no complaints. <laughs> Great. So, so there you go, uh, folks. So, so the, the whole uh, if, if you're not familiar with Grace uh, Texan in Tokyo, that is the the name of her YouTube channel. So mm-hmm. Grace is a uh, a YouTuber who is kind of exploding on the scene essentially I, i've got to admit i've been i've been following you for a little while um i'm familiar with some of your um you, you know your you know your friends rachel and june and of course i'm uh not as active as i once was but you know i'm familiar with the youtube community and you've your channel's been really doing well lately it really has um i was actually i was talking to my husband about that that i think we got lucky i've actually been blogging since 2012 so i was of course a blogger before ever starting youtube mm-hmm. and i did that for a solid two two and a half years before even starting my youtube channel okay so when i eventually did start it i, I already had you know a couple hundred subscribers right off the bat who kind of followed me over to the youtube sphere okay. nice, got, nice. i've already been used to like creating content so it wasn't as difficult, like transitioning into videos. Nice, nice. Okay, cool. Well, I, I'm, I'm curious, Grace. Grace, what? Okay, well, first of all, you don't have to tell me exactly where you are, but w- yes. what part of Japan do you live in? Um, we live in, uh, not Tokyo, but in that general area. Okay, so you're you're in the Kanto area. Yes, that's and, what it's called. And, really and you're in your more of a kind of a rural area as well, aren't you now? We're in a very rural area. Very rural. Okay. So the like, sa- is the sound of cicadas deafening outside right now? Well, not now, but in the morning. And I absolutely love it. And like rice fields everywhere and little old grannies. And like, it's absolutely wonderful. Like we're the part of Japan where all the youngins are moving out and like moving to the big cities. And we're just like. <laughs> oh, I completely understand. You're in the part of Japan I want to be in. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm the kind of person who, um, the older I get, the more interested in the more like passion that I become about like nature, ecology, critters, animals, birds, insects, all that stuff. And I would totally love to live in the Inaka. It's Absolutely. Fabulous. We, we lived in Tokyo for a couple of years and just, and neither my husband nor I are really city folk. We were both raised in the countryside. And so as soon as we were able to, we were like, you know what? Let's go to the countryside. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, I'm a country mouse as well. I come from a small little fishing village in eastern Canada. So, uh, yeah, I completely understand. Um, so, so when did you uh, first come to Japan? And you've already mentioned um, you've your husband, who is yes. from a rural area. So, what 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 brought you to Japan? Well, this time around, my husband brought me to Japan. Um, okay. My husband, Yosuke, and I met in college. He studied abroad at my university, and my first day of sophomore year, he, like, helped me bring my suitcases into the dormitory. And so we we were college sweethearts, and we oh, wow. got married uh, when we graduated, and then he got a job in Tokyo, and I was like, okay, now let's move to Tokyo. This will be fun. <laughs> and, so, and, and was it? Was, it? was Tokyo fun? It was. It was very fun. Um uh, when my husband's study abroad finished, I actually followed him to Japan and did a year study abroad oh, okay. in Tokyo. And so, like, I, I was familiar with the city. I, I, yeah, I had lived there for a year and a half. It was 
um, it was it was wonderful. It just um, I got kind of overwhelmed and yeah. tired of just the really busy life and you know the the crazy working hours and the commuting and just the the traffic and the big buildings and it it was fun when I was a college student and then once I kind of like grew up a little bit I realized that I don't maybe actually want to live in a city so yeah I completely understand I mean Tokyo I've been there a few times um I went up there I, I actually it's been a while but uh you know it, it's a great place to visit it's so fun to visit yeah. I have to admit but I I'm also I mean I live like Kobe is a city of uh, where I live Kobe is a city of like 1.5 million people but it feels like a village compared to Tokyo. Uh, I I went to Kobe. I've been there a couple times and I absolutely loved it. That um, when my husband and I were looking at places to move, Kobe was actually on our list. Uh, it was I think it was number three, and so we were we were close. Uh, it's an awesome city. I love it here. It's uh, because I mean it is small enough that I mean it's it, it's big enough to have everything you need. It's small enough to not feel so cramped. But um, and you're, you're right beside you have the sea and the mountains and all that jazz. But yeah, um, yeah so, okay. So now, uh, Grace, you are an artist, and you, uh, you know, I, I think I, the first time I actually the first time I I I, I heard about you was mm -hmm. uh, on an interview. You were on the uh, G Pod, the Guy Jim Pod podcast, yes. um, quite a while ago. With uh, maybe that was like a year. <laughs> two years ago, a year and a half ago, something like that, um, yeah. with uh, Anthony Joe, and that's when I first heard about you, and he interviewed you and, and, and talked to you about, um, you published a book of your, your cartoons, and um, I believe that book was about uh, problems, not problems, um, how shall I say, uh, when you're in an international marriage, yes. and, and, and the the uh, differences you come across, you know, having, uh, you know, two people from different cultures. But so um, can you tell us a little bit about your cartoons and your books? So my that that book that you were talking about, that was my first comic book uh, titled My Japanese Husband Thinks I'm Crazy. <laughs> uh, and that was my like, it was my little pet project. And uh, I have such fond feelings for that book. Um, so the inspirations for my comics all of them are true stories that I wanted to kind of paint a picture of what it's really like to be a foreigner in Japan or just being in an international marriage or something like that that um, I wanted to use kind of my own experiences to kind of teach that you know Japan isn't this whole crazy technology like underwear and vending machines like <laughs> it's more like taking your shoes off in the house and and figuring out what miso to buy when you go to the supermarket and there's like two aisles full of miso and you're just like what is happening um mm. and so i kind of just wanted to i i mean i i <laughs> i started drawing my comics actually uh on my honeymoon because i was a blogger for a really long time and um my husband and i did this whole like month and a half long trip and we were in peru when my computer broke down and okay. i was supposed to be blogging and i all of a sudden i couldn't do any blogging and it was driving me crazy and i couldn't record what was happening and so i started drawing these comics in my notebook uh, and then we would just take a picture on my husband's smartphone and just uploaded them onto my blog and then all of a sudden those became like more popular than my blog posts were. And oh really? Okay, wow. It just like, <laughs> I so I went with it. Like I, I love drawing. Drawing's always been really fun and it's been relaxing and so I was like, well, if this is what people want to see, then sure, I'll do that. Like, why not? Are you, are you trained in drawing? Are you trained in art? Have you been doing it for a long time? Oh, God, no. Um, <laughs> when I was in middle school, my friend and I started a comic book, kind of, where she drew the storyboard, and then I drew the pictures for it. And we did that for about six months, and so we decided we were going to, like, publish a book, and we were going to do comics and stuff like that. But then uh, my mom got a job in, in Ghana, in West Africa, so we moved there, and that, like, dream died right there. So I hadn't really drawn comics since middle school. <laughs> well, so you basically you started drawing as an adult. Yeah. <laughs> well, so so there you go, folks listening um, out there. Uh, Just Japan podcast listeners. A lot of you who do contact me are like, what can I do in Japan? Um, what can I do in Japan? I don't want to be a teacher. I mean, and, and often so many of the episodes that we have 
we, we interview people who are not teachers here in Japan. I mean, I'm a teacher. That's what I do. But I'm like a, I'm an elementary school teacher back home in Canada. So like, that's what I do. I'm a teacher. Yeah. Um, and I love doing it because that's my, my vocation. But for yeah. a lot of people, you know, like, I want to come to Japan, but I don't want to teach. I mean, and here's another example, folks, of you don't always have to be a teacher. Well, comics. A lot, a lot of other things. You could be. You come here and be a comic artist. Um, yeah. Okay, maybe that's not such an easy task, but... <laughs> Um, so, so, so you've got, I believe you have three books. Am I correct? I do. Yes. So so can you tell us about the three different, uh, books that you've published so far? They're kind of basically the same thing. Um, like they're not the same comics that they're very chronological. So my first comic book came out last summer and then my second one came out in February. And then my third one came out, um, actually like three weeks ago, two weeks ago, um, and they're just a compilation of all the comics I've uploaded on my blog, plus, you know, 20% or so that I draw. But, you know, I'm only uploading four to five comics a week, and I draw maybe, like, seven comics a week. And so okay. I act like, buffer. And then I pull blog posts off of my blog as well and sometimes write original stuff and just throw it into this. It's, you know, there's some text and there's some um, comics and there's some, like, uh, my last book had some like useless Japanese words that I mean they're just words that I find hilarious like bako donatama like an old man with a barcode head which just means like a dude with a really bad comb over yeah 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 barcode and so just like collecting all sorts of whatever off of my blog or whatever I'm thinking of that day or writing about a comic or something like that that I just throw that into a book and people buy them for some reason. So. <laughs> well, I think this is probably a pretty good reason. I saw recently on, uh, in my Facebook stream that uh, Hiko Simon, um, his, uh, his copy of, uh, of your latest book arrived, and he was pretty happy. Um, was... Hiko is uh, one, one of the two and a half Oyajis. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, so, uh, so now, you, you know, you talk about like these kind of everyday – you know, your, your your comics are kind of about these like everyday life experiences you have here in Japan as a foreigner, the cultural yes. differences. What are what are some of the I mean, um, I don't know. I mean, you mentioned already, like, for example, you had the, the book about, um, you know, essentially like being married to a foreign, uh, being married to a Japanese person. What are some of the what are some of the examples of things that the, the differences that people who are like maybe coming to Japan or have never been here, they want to come to Japan um, to live, to work. What are some of the differences? I mean, even the, these like everyday little things that might surprise them. Um, and I know there's a billion, but if you could share a couple, <laughs> so many, uh, some of my more popular comics that like really resonated with people. Um, one was that in Japan, most people do laundry every single day. And we're like in America, my family did laundry like once a week, maybe twice a week. But now, um, well, I guess my husband's kind of taken over the laundry because I just don't. <laughs> um, but when I first moved here, I was having a hard time. Like, it's such a waste. Like, just doing laundry for, like, three shirts and maybe one pair of pants. So that's it. Like, it's it's such a – but that's, like, a it's a really – it's a Japanese thing. Or um, a, another comic that ended up being really popular was uh, – when my husband and I were going on a triple date with some of our friends and they were of course all Japanese and we decided to go to the beach. And so I got really excited and I got there and the other two girls weren't wearing bikinis that they were just wearing like regular clothes and they didn't want to get in the water and they wanted to like sit under the little tent thingy that they brought um, uh-huh. because they didn't want to get tan. And so I was just sitting there and I was like in a bikini and I was like, but, but we've got beach stuff. Like I want to go play in the water. Like what, what? And so that was just kind of stuff. Like I knew that, tanning isn't you know having really tan skin isn't necessarily something that is admired in Japanese culture and so a lot of girls don't want to get tan or they don't want to wear a bikini at the beach or something like that but it still it just didn't really click until I was already there and then I was just like oh yeah then you see that that's why the uh the the popular the arm the arm gloves um you know parasols yes Yes. people the word I, I did use the word parasol um, I was really surprised by that when I first came to Japan. I mean, I got here in like 2008, and mm-hmm. um, I remember when I showed up at in Osaka, and I was staying in a hotel, and it was raining, and I actually went to a shop to buy an umbrella, and I actually bought a parasol. Oh, no! Yeah, I brought a little black parasol. I was like, that's kind of a strange umbrella, but it's an umbrella, right? I thought. 
And I remember when my <laughs> I was like oh. heading heading to like Osaka Station. It was a pouring raining day, really heavy rain, and I'm like running across the street pulling my suitcases. This with is it, not an umbrella. With a well, well uh, this this umbrella. I was like thinking this umbrella really sucks. It's not keeping me dry at all. And my wife met me, and she was, uh, "Why why did you buy a parasol?" And I'm like, "Oh, what? You mean like from like the 1800s British era women? What?" Yeah. Um, and then I, I I quickly and then I realized why why are you know why are women carrying umbrellas on sunny days and cloudy mm -hmm. days and non rainy days? And I learned that basically, and I mean, I guess I, I lived in Korea, bef you know, before I came to Japan, and it's similar. People don't use parasols per se, but um, though, though, I, I suppose um, I uh, get having having white skin as white as possible is kind of the beauty objective. Yes. Yeah. Very very different cultural uh, thing. Whereas in, for example, you know, in our, you know, I'm a Canadian, you're American, Western culture, having a nice healthy tan. And there was a term we say healthy tan, right? Looks like you're you, you're 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 outside. You're fit. You're active. We yeah. find, you know we find that a, uh, you know for the most part a very attractive thing. Um, but yeah, very... that's that's been a fun thing to adjust to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the laundry every day. I have to admit, I agree. It kind of it's like part of the the life cycle, <laughs> the routine. Must... And like, you don't have a, a dryer, you hang it out. To sun. And like, I love the way that sun makes clothes smell. Like, I think it's fantastic, but it took me a couple weeks or a couple months to really get used to like, wait, what you hang your clothes up outside? Like we don't, we're not going to get a dryer. Really? Like, isn't that kind of, well, but... I, mean, I, I can remember where I grew up in rural Canada. We had, I mean, we had a dryer, but we also, like, my mom would always love to, we had a big, long clothesline out in the backyard. My mom loved to hang out clothes in the summertime, you know, um, but that was kind of like, it was, I mean, summer in Eastern Canada at the time was only like, you know, we're talking six weeks a year. Um, oh my God. <laughs> that's true. But I mean, so you really enjoyed it. I mean, I, and I know that sun does kill bacteria and that's a good thing and all, but it's just like, it's a pain in the butt when it's like. The winter time or rainy season. Right now, it's taking so long for our clothes Nothing to. Nothing dries. Uh, oh yeah, and even it even gets to the point sometimes where like the mold can start to grow on your clothes because they just don't dry. Um, okay, well, okay, so so you're working in Japan now. I mean, you're in Japan. Um, how many years have you been here? In total, right, I'm counting. Just a second. This is uh, four years. Okay. Fifth year. So you're 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 working. You're essentially. I mean, you're a freelancer, I suppose. I mean, it's basically you're, you're working for yourself. You're working independently. You're doing a lot of different things. You're wearing many hats, so I to speak. So um, do you find it? Do you find it challenging doing this work in Japan? Do you think it might be easier if you were doing this the same type of work in America versus Japan, or would it be pretty much challenging wherever you were? It's difficult because I've never worked as a freelancer in America, so I actually wouldn't know that I, I only started working for myself when I got to Japan. Uh, and the jobs that I had in America were either like summer jobs or, you know, working at the college that I was at. But I, I really, the Japanese workplace is the only workplace I've ever really known. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's interesting, I think, working as a freelancer. And I've met a lot of other Japanese freelancers that when I first got here, I kind of thought, oh, nobody else is doing this, that I'm the only one. And now I have this great network of all sorts of people that are doing all sorts of fascinating things. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I, I absolutely love working for myself. And I, I can't imagine um, doing anything else. And actually, the reason I started kind of working for myself is I have health problems. Like I, I get sick very easily, you know, I get the flu two or three times a year that I'm just, my health is not fantastic. Okay. And so I have to get at least eight hours of sleep every single night. And that just wasn't working with like Japanese companies. Um, oh God, no, not, not. And, and also I, I suppose if that's the case, living where you live is uh, the best place versus the big city because um, my health is, improved dramatically since yeah. we moved here. the big city i mean you think about it you get in those um little disease boxes known as subway cars and mm -hmm. you're, you're just yeah. because i mean like for myself for example like uh you know i i just started um last year but a year and a half ago um mm -hmm. bicycle commuting every day oh and, and now that i bicycle commute i've got to admit like when i was taking the train or subway every day commuting to work 
I was getting sick, you know, no, no joke, at least like, probably once a month, I was getting yeah. sick. And, and the year and a half that I've been cycling, I don't think I've had, actually, I don't even think I've had one cold. Oh, that's wonderful. And I mean, I, I teach children, I'm an elementary yeah. school teacher. Um, but at the same time, I really yeah. think that I was always getting sick because of, of the commuting and, and using public transportation and just being like sometimes wedged in a rush hour and like a, a subway or a train car with, you know, hundreds of people, dozens of people, whatever it may be, who are sick and coughing and hacking and yeah. It's and although I'm in a big city, just like taking my bicycle to school every day. And I mean, I'm assuming it's probably like increasing my immune system and this and that just like, you oh, know, yes, but, uh, but not being around all the people who are sick, I think helps. Yeah. A lot too. I think it, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting too. Like, I mean, what you're talking about, like, you know, I, I suppose you've, you don't really have something to gauge it to because you've become a freelancer, an independent, working for yourself in, in Japan. But I mean, we've had people on the Just Japan podcast in the past who are kind of in similar situations. Um, maybe, you know, do you know Jenny Silver? Yes, I do. Jenny Silver, yeah. She's been, she's a friend of the show, Jenny Silver, if you're listening. Hi. Hello, how are you doing? Um, she's Hi. been on the show a few times. And I mean, she works as a professional voice actor, narrator, translator. She does, she wears a million hats as well. And, uh, you know, it's really cool that she transitioned from being a teacher to doing a lot of really cool freelance work on her own. Um, and I think that's one of the cool things about um, perhaps being a foreigner in Japan is that you do get to wear a lot of hats where a lot of the, I, I do some narration and voice acting as well. And I, I've done all sorts of crazy things. And a lot of the time it's just like a friend of a friend is like, oh, we need an American narrator for this. Can you do it? And then I do that. And then I meet someone else through that where I'm not professionally trained to do anything that I'm doing right now, actually. <laughs> yeah. No, even what I got my degree in college was in like, politics that I, I haven't taken writing classes. I, I have no training to do what I'm doing right now at all, but I can just because I happened to meet someone at some time who was like, oh, you should try this. And then I tried it. And then now it's one of my hats. Exactly. Well, I mean, sometimes we develop a skill set um, without formal training. And I mean, I think when you meet a lot of people out there who do really incredible, awesome things, um, they don't have formal training in it. I mean, I think, uh, you know, I was a professional musician in my 20s um, mm -hmm. and uh, I worked for quite a while I toured around parts of Canada doing like musical theater and I uh, played in rock bands and stuff and I never had any formal training I was just completely self-taught and it was just like opportunity opportunity and eventually got to the point where I was doing it so much and playing so much that I was just practicing hours and hours a day anyway yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, and it was it was all about networking. Like you mentioned, you meet someone who says, hey, I got a gig here. Uh, can you do this? And then you meet more people and you meet more people. And then I think like any anywhere in the world, in America, Canada, Australia, wherever you may be, you start networking and you make a network. Yeah. And it's like it's not intentional. But before you know it, it's just kind of like, oh, all right, cool. Like, yeah. And I mean, even for example, and this will transition into the next thing I want to talk about, your YouTube channel. I mean, I yeah. know you, you've got yourself a nice YouTube network now. For example, I know you're friends with uh, Rachel and June and Charlotte in Japan and, and a, a lot of the kind of movers and shakers. And I mean, even like when you meet people like that, that helps a lot. Um, yeah, no, it's it's kind of amazing that there's so many really interesting and just really friendly people doing YouTube in Japan. So it's they're they're very welcoming and they're just it's a great group of people. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about your YouTube channel? Because I mean, um, this is something that's becoming pretty big for you. I think uh, I've been, I you know I, I like to t I like to tap in from time to time and check out people and how they're doing this and that. And I mean, I'm I'm a I'm a busy guy. I don't have a lot of time to watch a lot of videos. But I, I've seen in a short time your channel has has had quite a bit of growth, and yeah. it's exciting to see that. Um, I I kind of had that years kind of a period of that years ago, and then I stopped really kind of creating content, and then it stopped. But you're doing these amazing podcasts, so it's no. Not well, like there we go. There we go. Yeah, yeah. But um, but so, but yeah. So, uh, what what's the deal with your channel? What's your channel? What's the kind of the the thing about your channel? What is your channel uh, about? Do you have a theme? Um, so my channel is called Texan in Tokyo, and I think the theme is just life in general. So I, I do a lot of videos like day in my life videos where I just 
take the camera around and I'm like, now I'm going to do this. And not just showing people like, this is what an average day in my life looks like. And I, I do some at like Japanese restaurants or talking about Japanese culture, but I also do like self help, like, um, uh, a recent video that I did that was really popular was, um, why I have trouble believing my husband when he tells me that he thinks I look beautiful without makeup because it's just, I always think, you know, just makeup. And so it's, um, I don't, particularly have a theme I guess I kind of just want to keep it open because I don't know if I'm going to stay in Japan forever and I don't know what I'm going to be interested in the next year and so I'd like to just have maybe five different themes so that if I ever get tired of one I can just stop doing it and do something else and I won't like lose all of my subscribers <laughs> yeah yeah I mean I understand I mean I started YouTubing in Korea I lived in Busan and which is why my YouTube handle is Busan Kevin not That's the most right. creative thing but that was in the infancy of of YouTube, I had no idea nine years later I'd still be doing it. Um, you know, and then I moved to Canada after that, and then I made YouTube videos in Canada, and then I moved to Japan, and, uh, and I, actually my family, my wife and I, we plan on moving back to Canada in the next couple of years. Um, so possibly I'll still be YouTubing in Canada. Um, so, but I've never had a theme. I've always been just random, but that's me. I'm just, people always say, Kevin, if you had a theme, you'd be more successful. I'm like, my theme is, I just walk along, and if I see something interesting, I pull out the the camera or the phone, and and, and off I go. <laughs> yeah. Um, people who watch my channel, I think uh, we also kind of were talking about this recently. Mm. That people watch our channel are watching it for us, like they they like us as people. They're not necessarily watching for the content. Like some people are watching for the content, like they want to learn more about Japan and this and that. But we'd rather have like one of those channels where it doesn't really matter what we're mm, doing yeah people just kind of tune in just say, i wonder what grace and yosuke are doing today yeah, you think. know exactly you know today i was uh this evening before we uh we started this interview i was uh i was i was going through some of your videos uh, doing research um mm -hmm. you know basically i was watching i was watching a, a bunch of your day in the life videos and uh i started looking through the comments and your viewers love you guys I mean, I was I was reading some of the comments, and your viewers just are just like, I love watching you and Yosuke. Like, you guys make me so happy. You're so in love. I wish I could have what you guys have. Um, you know that kind of thing. That's I was seeing that that kind of recurring kind of theme in comments as I went through, and I'm like, that's nice. Like, I was getting warm and fuzzies read, reading the comments, and that's so I can tell like what you're just saying it seems pretty accurate from what I was seeing in the comments. Like people just love seeing you and your husband. And I think if you were to, to move to a, a polar research station in the Antarctic um, next week, they would still love to watch your videos. And I think if we move to like a polar place in Antarctica, we'd get a bunch of new subscribers just because of Antarctica. Because like, it'd be penguins, you know? I, I, is that is it something? I don't. Yeah, penguins. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Penguins. Yeah. Well, cool. So, I mean, uh, before you came to Japan, um, yeah. were there any YouTubers you were watching? Because often when I talk to people on the show, um, you know, people who've come to Japan within the last few years, they say that they watched so and so, or they watched you know different people who kind of inspired them, or taught them, or gave them some knowledge. Were, were there any YouTubers you were following before you came here? I feel really bad, but. No, and actually that's the reason it took me so long to start YouTube is I, before I started YouTube, I didn't watch YouTube. Like, I like clickbait articles and I like, I love books. I read like three or four books a week that books are like my addiction. Okay. That I don't watch, I've never owned a TV. We don't own a TV now. I don't watch very many videos at all. And so like, a lot of people on my blog kept telling me like, Grace, you should do a YouTube channel. And I was just like, but I don't watch YouTube. Like, I don't, why would I? If I, I only want to create things that I like consume. So like I read comics, so I wanted to make comics and I read blogs. So I wanted to make a blog. Uh, yeah. And so I really dragged my feet with YouTube because I didn't watch YouTube videos. And then I created one. And then after I created a channel, I started watching other people. And now like I have so many people that I watch and I like freaking love their channels. But no, before I, I came to Japan and before I started my channel, I sadly did not watch anyone. <laughs> okay. Well, I know that. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, you know, um, some people are consumers, some people are creators. Um, I have to admit that, like for myself, um, I'm more of a creator than a consumer. So, I mean, although I am subscribed to a lot of people, I really, 
gosh, I don't really watch anybody on YouTube. Uh, now, from time to time, like I'll sit down and I'll just click on my, my subscriptions tab on my channel and I'll be like, oh, there's like if something pops up, like, oh, there's a video by, you know, Victor or there's a video by uh, Rachel and June or, you know, Molly or someone. I'll be like, oh, and I'll watch a video. Yeah. And then I might not watch another YouTube video of a vlogger for yeah. a week, but I do I do use YouTube a lot to watch like documentaries. Yeah. Um, I use it a lot to watch TV shows. I was on like a, <laughs> I don't know why, but I went on a binge of watching old Cheers reruns a few weeks yeah. ago. And like, so I, I, I'm constantly on YouTube, but I'm not watching YouTubers. Um, I'm like just using it. I'm watching like Discovery Channel shows or BBC yeah. documentaries, that kind of thing. Actually, my recent kind of addiction for YouTube is um, like the the Vlog Brothers. Of course, I love mm. them. The Crash Course one, and so I've been like teaching myself everything. I'm almost through psychology right now, and it's just fascinating. And I'm like, this is so cool. Like I watch that when I'm taking a lunch break and stuff. Nice. Uh, but yeah, yeah, for the most part, I'll just kind of tune in and be like, oh, this looks interesting. I'll watch it. But um, it's very rare for me to watch like everybody's videos uploaded. Oh, and yeah. yeah. And of course, I'm sure you sometimes fall through the YouTube rabbit hole where you watch a video and then you see the suggested ones on the side. And then within 30 minutes, you're like, what am I doing? It's like, I'm wasting I my life. Why am I watching this video? Yeah. yeah. But usually when if I watch too many in a row, I'll be like, oh, my gosh, that gives me a great idea. And then I'll like go off and draw something or nice. oh. I want to make a video like this. And then I like tear myself away from the, the YouTube and it, it becomes inspiration and then yes. you can create something awesome awesome okay well I'm curious um so hey you're like me you're a foreigner living in Japan yes. um you've been here for about four years now you mentioned yes so uh do you find it tough living here <laughs> or is it all is it all uh is it all just amazing it's a land of wonderment and manga and anime rainbows uh, <laughs> Thing is rainbows and unicorns um i do find it challenging but i think it would be challenging living anywhere so um i actually went to three different high schools on three different continents that uh oh really oh wow okay so like i don't really know where i belong in a culture anymore like <laughs> uh we left texas when i was 13 and for all intents and purposes i go back to visit my family like my grandma sometimes but um i don't I don't know who I am or what I am. So, Japan so is... did you did you go to different international schools? Yes, and boarding schools. And... Okay, well, okay, I'm I'm an international school teacher, so uh, oh, cool. I understand. So now I'm like, okay, you're an international school kid. Yeah, I yeah, I've I've met a lot of really interesting kids with a lot of different stories and tales, and that's yes. what I do. So I'm not an English teacher, so I I meet a lot of kids with a lot of really amazing stories often, and who've done way more than I have. Um, although they're so much younger than I am. Just try not, I, I keep up with some of my friends from high school who are like doing amazing things, even mm -hmm. more than whatever. And I'm just kind of like, ah, it's okay. I'm happy for you. No, exactly. I mean, you just, yeah, yeah. And I still like follow some of my old teachers from like high school and stuff like that on Twitter. And we talk sometimes and it's like, it's nice because they're now they're in all these different countries and it's just kind of like, I have friends in every country. Well, it, well, international school teachers tend to be like international school students. Um, we tend to just kind of move around everywhere. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool when you talk to people. You meet people like, oh, they teach in Japan. They're like, oh, what did you teach before this? Oh, I taught in Korea. Oh, and then before that, I taught in like Germany, and before that, I taught in the Czech Republic, and da 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 da. da. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, you know, life, 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 life here presents challenges, I suppose, but okay. life anywhere does. Yeah. And, um, I, what I find the most challenging is. Um, I was very shy growing up, like not necessarily shy, I was just kind of like a weird kid. I talked to myself a lot. I just kind of like, I was my own party and okay. I skipped a couple grades and I was like really into math and um, I didn't get bullied, thankfully, but like I was never the center of attention and people like, I just kind of faded into the background because when you move every one to two years, if you stick out when you first move to a new school, that's like easiest way you can get bullied where if you just kind of blend in the background nobody pays any mind to you and so it's kind of difficult for me right now is that people do stare or they they, they ask questions and it's um it's frustrating because i can't just blend into the background anymore no abso absolutely not <laughs> it's not like most of the people who live here and so um 
it's probably the uh, you, you know, in the room I was usually one of the more like shy kind of quiet like studious people where now I feel like I'm really loud and big and I break everything and I don't know who I am or what I am or what normal is or what attractive is or anything like that anymore so that's it's, it is what it is. Well, I mean, as as a foreigner who comes to Japan, we essentially in the beginning we're a bull in China store, and uh, you uh, you you eventually kind of learn. Um, I I mean, I've been here seven years, and I've had people say to me now that even foreigners who've been here for a long time, or people who are like half Japanese, or people who are just you know experienced, they're kind of like, yeah, you you kind of get it now, Kevin. You just kind of, uh, mm, it's obvious you've been here for a while. But but the the whole thing is I'm sure when I go back home the you know like I mean I went back um, I would like to go back more than I do but a couple of years ago when I went back um, yeah. you know reverse culture shock city I'm just like why is everybody yeah. so loud and aggressive and in your face and kind of I thought it was pretty cool actually like I I remember being in a uh, a Tim Hortons coffee shop an iconic yeah. Canadian coffee shop and um, uh-huh. it was some dude kind of like cutting the line. And he just walked yeah. to the front line, and it, there was just like a couple of other guys. Like, hey, yo, what are you doing, man? Just cutting the line. It's, yeah, it's back there. Get back there now. And then he was like, "Hey, what are you doing?" And then like another guy's like, "Yeah, the line's back there. Get back there now." And then I'm just like, "Wow, that would never happen in Japan." I never. Yeah. And I'm like, "That's kind of cool." I mean, I was like, "Wow, this is really cool." Like, actually, people, some some dude did something he shouldn't do, and they're all calling him out on it. Called him out on it. Yeah. Um. But I, but I, I went through a whole moment of like, what's going on now? <laughs> oh wait, oh oh, this is Canada. Oh yeah yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I, I the last time I went back to Texas was last year in November, and it was really great seeing a lot of my family again and a lot of my friends again. But at family gatherings, I was just kind of sitting there. I was like, I don't know, like, what is happening? <laughs> Who are these people? Like, I don't. It was just, it was wonderful seeing people again, but it was also just a little bit bizarre because I was just like, I don't really understand why people are doing what they're doing anymore. Yeah, you get that bit of that, that reverse culture shock. I remember like I lived in Korea for five years and then I moved back to Canada and I went I went back to university. And to be yeah. honest, no joke, it took me five or six months before I actually felt like, okay, I'm back. I'm a Canadian again. But that's the hardest part is that everyone expects to feel culture shock when they move abroad, but people don't really expect how much like reverse culture shock they're mm, going to get. Mm. And they also just, there's not so many like forums for dealing with it or, or like online groups that you can contribute to and just like vent about what happened today that, um, so it's a lot harder. I think reverse culture shock is than just regular culture shock because at least with this regular culture shock, you can just like meet up with someone else in the same country at a coffee shop and just be like, I don't understand what's going on. And yeah, like, exactly. And I think, I think people, people who are back home, like in your own country, people who are back in Texas or like in, you know, where, you know, in Canada, wherever it may be, they're just like, they, they really don't get it. They're like, Hey, you're a Canadian. Like, you know, you're, you just move like, what, what, why, why do you find something strange? You're home now. This is where you're from. This is your home. Right. And like, it is my home, but it isn't too. Cause I mean, in my case, I've been, God, I've been living abroad essentially since 2002. Whew. Yeah, I've been living abroad a lot of my adult life, most of my adult life. So, uh, you know, it's I work really hard to kind of keep up with what's going on in some ways. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's – and I work with a lot of foreigners. And I, so I work with a lot of foreigners, and that's cool, my work environment. Yeah. But when I'm going to a restaurant or a bar or a coffee shop, anywhere outside of my work life – yeah. There was no foreigners. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so okay, so, uh, you know, your YouTube channel has been doing very well. Yes. Um, so uh, when, when, when did this kind of, how did the trajectory start to happen? Um, you know, you, you said you started off, you had a couple of hundred subscribers. And, and what happened after that? Eventually, I think when I first started, I had like 50 subscribers for the first <laughs> five or 10 videos. Um, I started off just doing videos once or twice a month because I wasn't sure if that was something I really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And around this time, I decided I was going to publish a book. And so I was putting a lot of effort into a book. And I kind of decided, like, I'll do a little bit of promotion on this YouTube channel, make a couple of videos. We'll just, you know, we'll see what's going to happen. And worse comes to worse, it, it will help me with my 
presentation skills because I felt awkward talking in front of a camera, especially when I was like being interviewed and stuff like that. Um, it, it started picking up steam like slowly that um, one of the problems I see when a lot of my friends start blogs or YouTube channels is that they'll be really excited at first, but then the initial excitement fades. And so yeah. you'll put like a video you know, twice a week, twice a week, and then once a week, once a week, and then skip one week, and then it's been a month, and then there's like two months between your videos, and then you kind of just stop. And so I really didn't want that to happen, so I specifically like went slow, like one video a month, and then the okay. next month, two videos, next month will be three videos, so that I would never like get tired of it. Yeah. Um, and then I met Rachel at a party. And she was like, you have a Japanese husband. I have a Japanese husband. Let's do a video. And I was like, okay, cool. And then I got, you know, two, 3,000 subscribers just from that video. Yeah, exactly. I mean, because Rachel and June are really big, right? And, right. and, and so, they're awesome. Hey, Rachel and June, I hope you're listening. <laughs> so, like, I love Rachel. She's amazing. She's a great, yeah, she's a really cool lady. Yeah. So I kind of... I was doing it by myself for the first six months and then my husband quit his job and moved up to the countryside and then he joined me and he started being in videos with me and now he does a lot of the, the editing and he does all the subtitles and so now we get to do it together and so it's our like I think, I, I think that's the key when you become the combo and I think I think that it really attracts a lot more people in, in many aspects I think right it's so much more fun than I was doing it than when I was doing it on my own and like my blog's always been my own thing and my comics like are my own thing and now that I get to share them with him and he gets to do it too it's like it's really exciting because I mean it, we can both remember a time when we were dating slash getting married before I had a blog and before any of that started and so it's just kind of fun to like work in this hobby together nice yeah no I mean I, my my wife never appears in videos um she supports what I do yeah uh, she thinks it's cool um I think initially she thought it was pretty weird <laughs> um, she didn't really understand what it was. So, I mean, we were together, we, my wife and I have been together for like, you know, we lived in Korea together oh, and wow. then in Canada together. So like I met my wife in Korea, my Japanese wife in Korea. Wow. Um, and you know, I was a YouTuber then and she was kind of like, what the heck is this? And I think everyone was like, what the heck is this? And then yeah. I moved to Canada and I'd be, I'd be doing like my walk and talking vlogs in Ottawa and people are like, what the hell is this? Well, I still can't do that. It's just, why too... are people talking? To, I was talking to, I was talking to a camera back in like 2007 and yeah. I was like, man, this guy's a freak. What's he doing? He's like crazy. <laughs> And um, then I came to Japan, and then it was when I first started like organizing meetups, and this is like mm -hmm. early days of YouTube, and uh, you know my wife actually started meeting a lot of these other YouTubers, and she's like, "Wow, these are really great people." Oh, good. Like they're they're not mutants, you know. <laughs> like these are actually really nice people, and to be honest, some of the best friends I've ever had in my life have been people I've met on YouTube, and okay. I've had people I've met on YouTube. Who, you know, like, you know, my friend John Pham, um, who lives in Chicago, I'd never met him before, but we, we were YouTube friends and we exchanged like Christmas presents and birthday presents. And then oh, he, that's... when he visited Japan, he stayed at my house for a few days, you oh, know, that's... and then like, I've got many stories like that. So like for me, YouTube has been, um, no, really amazing. Um, <laughs> I never, never, at one point a few years ago, I was doing quite well financially. That all changed for various reasons, but, um, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's something now, although I don't really make any money from doing it, I meet so many amazing people. Yeah. It's, it's so cool. I love YouTube because it's a great opportunity to meet and connect with people. And mm -hmm. it's an opportunity, like way for me to connect with an audience so that a lot of people who watch my channel end up buying my books and that's wonderful. Um, but it's it's like that with my podcast. I got to like now I'm really passionate about the Just Japan podcast, and to be honest, if if I just if I had no YouTube channel and nothing nothing nothing, I just started this podcast. I'm sure episode one I would have had like one download, but when I did my first up because of who I was on YouTube, Bruce yeah. Kevin, my first episode, um, you know, within like the first day I had like seven or eight hundred downloads. Oh yay! So it was you know. So that that it was just that audience kind of like, carried over. And, yeah. And now you know now we, we you awesome people they're listening you know who you are all of you listening. Um, you guys are awesome. We're getting, we're getting just like you know thousands and thousands of downloads a month, um, and it's it, it's and of course 
most of it's because of YouTube. Um, yeah. Um, mm. So, okay, so your books. Um, yes. You, you've, we've talked about your books. Okay, so what, what's the deal? What's your latest book, and what is it all about? And, wh and where can people buy it? Where can people buy it? And where that can they buy all of your books? This is always the biggest question. Because it's um, an important one, yes. My latest book is called Confessions of a Texan in Tokyo. Um, I'd always wanted to use that name, and since the comics followed us, like the, my, the last comics I drew in Tokyo before we moved, I was like, well, I got to use this title now because I don't know when we're moving back. Um, <laughs> that's how I picked a book title. <laughs> uh, and like my other two books are My Japanese Husband Thinks I'm Crazy, My Japanese Husband Still Thinks I'm Crazy, which was just kind of like the follow up, and then Confessions of a Texan in Tokyo. Mm. Um, all three of them, yeah, they're just about my life, blog posts and comics and all sorts of fun things. I have an imaginary pet rabbit that I talk to because I'm a little weird. Um, <laughs> he appears in the, the books. You can buy them on, if you're in America or if you're in Europe, you can buy them on Amazon or Amazon UK. They are currently not being sold on Amazon Japan because they were charging me so much to just list it and then I still had to ship it and it was a bunch of problems and so I was making like 50 yen per sale and it was just not worth it and so i pulled it off of amazon japan um if you live not in america or not in the uk then i sell my books on etsy which they're all in my house and i have little postcards and i sign them and i write people notes and then i ship them off and you can get them for a lot cheaper than trying to pay for international shipping awesome so you sell them on etsy okay cool 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 um so they technically count as um a handmade product because they're self-published and because I sign them and ship them from my house, it like it counts. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I'm actually going to be, um, and I'm alluding to things right now. I'm opening an Etsy shop this <gasps> summer. I'm, a, I am a crafty person, believe it or not. Um, I was a kindergarten teacher for seven years, and when you were a kindergarten teacher, you become crafty. <laughs> Yeah. And um, I have many, str not strange hobbies, many hobbies, including nature photography. And uh, I'm an armchair ornithologist and entomologist. I love bugs and birds. I take pictures. But I also like to make stuff. Um, yeah. So I'm actually going to be opening an Etsy shop this summer. And I will talk about that more on another episode of the podcast. Um, but, uh, but yeah, definitely all those links, please give them to, send them to me. And I'm going to put them in the show notes at BooseOnKevin.com. Mm -hmm. So for all of you guys that are listening, every link on how to buy a book, uh, mm -hmm. how, to, how to buy one of Grace's books will be in the show notes uh, at boostonkevin.com. Um, and, I, you know, let's wrap it up. I don't want to keep you up too late. Um, if people want to find you on social media, how can they do that? Um, I'm really only on Facebook and Twitter. Like I have a Facebook page and I chat with people via messages and I chat with people on Twitter all the time. I don't have anything else because I just can't manage anything else. Like there's so many so I would rather do one or two well than have like yep. 20 miles that I don't tell you. Yeah. So um, Facebook and Twitter, just Texan in Tokyo. I'm like the only one that shows up. And yeah, I guess YouTube. Does YouTube count as social media? Absolutely. I'm also on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, I understand what you mean. Like I really kind of focus on, I've got, a, basically I focus on uh, uh, Twitter and Facebook as well. And Facebook is my real kind of, for me, for the Just Japan podcast and all that, that's really kind of where I live. Yeah, um, I spent I spent a lot of time on there with my mobile app on my iPhone. I'm just like chatting with people and talking to people, and I post so many news links and videos and just thoughts and photos and Instagram garbage. I'm just like, hey. but uh, but I love it. Like I threw on my Facebook page, I've like we've made a really awesome little community. Got a few yeah. thousand, got a few thousand people there who are just so involved and chatting all the time. It's cool. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's a great... Uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, well, yeah, Grace, hey, thank you so much for doing this tonight. The Texan in Tokyo on the Just Japan <laughs> podcast. Thank you so much for having me. This is very fun. Yeah, well, I'm glad you thought that. <laughs> um, and, and folks, all of you out there listening, uh, all the links uh, to... You know, check out all, all of Grace's cartoons, her YouTube channel, her Facebook page. All that stuff will be in the show notes at boostonkevin.com. Or just do a search on Google, on the yeah. interwebs. It's all there. I got to admit, um, I went on YouTube tonight and I typed Texan. And then, uh -huh. boom, like, in Tokyo <laughs> popped up. Yes. So, like, like, it literally was, like, Texan and then just, like, in Tokyo. 
Oh, when popped up. So I was like, well, there you go. She getting big. <laughs> She'd be popular. Woohoo! Yeah. Um, My so, yeah, famous. So folks, go check out uh, Grace's YouTube channel and check out her and her husband and their awesome videos. Um, I was just watching you guys drinking um, some Goya beer, which oh, is at the local family mart, no, the Lawson nearby. Uh, it's been there for the last two summer seasons. I've never had the courage to buy it. But after it's watching your video, good. it looks pretty good. I think I'm going to buy a, a, a can of it. It is very good. We have a video coming up. We bought a bunch of habusake, like the sneak venom alcohol, oh. four different types that we're planning on just drinking them all on camera and wow. talking about it. So. Well, I would love to watch that video. And you guys should watch it too. So go subscribe to uh, Grace's mm -hmm. channel. Um, well, thank you so much for doing this. Thanks for having me. This was this was absolutely fun. Awesome. Wonderful. Cool, cool, cool. All right, folks. So I want to thank Grace for taking the time to stop by the Just Japan podcast for episode number 72, A Texan in Tokyo. Um, yeah, so go to uh, her YouTube channel, uh, Texan in Tokyo, and subscribe. Um, she's doing extremely well on her channel, her and her husband are a very good-looking, entertaining pair who are very cute together. And uh, I understand why they're doing so well. It makes sense. And uh, check her out on Twitter and on Facebook and all that stuff. Um, her book links, all of those will be in the show notes at BusanKevin.com. And once again, thank you so much, Grace, for joining us this week. All right, and I want to throw out another big thanks to you out there listening today, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, tonight, the Just Japan podcast community. If it wasn't for you, this podcast wouldn't be here. I make it for you guys. Um, I love interacting with you. I love hanging out with you guys whenever I can. Uh, chatting on the Facebook page, on Twitter. Um, yeah, interacting with you on YouTube, all over the place. Uh, the community, the people, you guys listen to this podcast. You download it. And that's why I make it. If there were no ears on this podcast, I wouldn't be making any episodes. So I want to tell you how much I appreciate each and every one of you for listening. And I, I yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. You guys are, you know, yeah, you guys are awesome. You know who you are. All right, so like I mentioned earlier on in the episode, you can find us on iTunes, on Stitcher Internet Radio, on SoundCloud, and on Libsyn. All the links are in the show notes at boostonkevin.com. Um, you can, of course, support the show over on uh, patreon.com, patreon.com slash justjapanpodcast. Go check that out. Uh, that link will be in the show notes as well. And, of course, you can contact me whenever you want. You can always find me on Twitter at jlandkev, at J-L-A-N-D-K-E-V. Uh, come and join the really awesome Facebook community that we have. Um, you know, there's a lot of you guys, more than 2,000, more than 2,500. Someday, maybe there'll be 5,000. Um, but I try as hard as I can to interact with you all. A lot of fun stuff over on the uh, Just Japan Podcast Facebook page. I post videos that I link, uh, videos that I, I upload on my YouTube channels, videos sometimes that other people upload on their channels, news links, uh, pictures, this and that. Um, yeah, I enjoy I enjoy hanging out there. And, of course, you can always tell when I'm really busy at work because I can't interact as much as I would like to. And then if, it, it's always obvious to see when I have some free time and vacation time because I'm extremely active on that Facebook page. So go over there and really join the community. That's the hub of the community. I do my best to contact as many of you as I can, reply to your messages. I can't always do it, but I try my best. So go over there and like that page. That link will be in the show notes at boostonkevin.com. Um, yeah, you can find me, of course. You always email me at justjapanpodcast.gmail.com. If you got ideas for shows, you want to be on a show, pitch me. Um, you know, you just got some, you just want to say, hey, what's up? Uh, just say, what's up, Kevin? How you doing? Um, you know, yeah. Send me an email at justjapanpodcast.gmail.com and I'll get back to you. And of course, you can find me on YouTube at youtube.com slash Kevin and youtube.com slash jlandkev. Those are my two channels. I'm there from time to time. Actually, as soon as I finish uploading this episode tonight, or recording, I should say, this episode of the Just Japan Podcast, I'm going to put a few videos up on the Jlandkev channel. 
Um, all right, guys, so I want to thank you so much for taking the time to listen. I always appreciate it. You guys are awesome and a half. And that's it for episode number 72 of the Just Japan podcast, a Texan in Tokyo. So wherever you are in the world, I hope you are happy. I hope you're healthy. Stay tuned. So I'll be talking to you next week. Thank you.